Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my backyard. This is a pretty unusual spot for a Gulf fritillary to start to create a chrysalis, and that is actually on the leaf here of our cotton leaf passion vine. Interesting. Get a little closer here. As you can see, it rained nicely, so everything is nice and fresh with all these raindrops on it. That is pretty unique. I'm going to come around. We've got one more caterpillar over here. I'm going to take a picture of these cotton leaf passion vine flowers, which are a light lavender color. They're pretty small and they aren't open for very long. As I had mentioned in a previous video, they're only open for about three hours or so. Oh, see that frass? It's the caterpillar poop. And the caterpillar happens to be up under here. Oh, he's just munching away. certainly could be other caterpillars but these are the because the vine <laughs> goes all throughout our garden bed here you can hear the thunder in the distance and the other thing that's kind of nice that it since it's just rained is I don't have a lot of bees here at the moment but this passion vine pretty much goes through the bed. So those two caterpillars happen to be kind of towards the outside, so they were a little bit easier to see. And I wanted to capture them, and I was just so surprised when I came out this morning and I saw the one that had created, or is in his J position. And that is what they do when they're making their chrysalis. So that is pretty cool and a unique spot. Just get kind of a look at our bed. I've mentioned this before. This is our Amistad salvia, which is really popular, popular with hummingbirds and butterflies and pollinators. It's our mounding lantana. Oops. I'm gonna pan over here. This is what startled me, our squirrel. This. Sorry about that. Mounding my antenna. And then our cigar plant, or kufia. This is just gorgeous. I can't believe how much it's grown from just a small nursery pot. And this is known as the David Verity variety. And as I continue over this way, love these plants. Just love them. They are the Mexican sage. And they're starting to bloom again. Another flush of blooms here. Nice and thick, soft leaves. And just kind of come back and pan over. 
just has nice lighting this morning because of the rain that we had so we don't have the harsh sun out actually I don't think I sh was able to show the flowers last time on the flame acanthus it's been flowering the hummingbirds really like this particular flower and it's also the host plant the, to the Texas Crescent butterfly. So really happy with that plant. And this is the Mounding Lantana, only this one happens to be the red flowers were in the other bed it was the pink flowers, pink and yellow. And of course the butterfly bush that just is so worth having. The butterflies and hummingbirds and bees and everything just love butterfly bush. Just real calming. You can hear the birds calling. It's always fun to come out and be in the gardens. I'm going to walk to my south here because I do want to show an addition. to our backyard, which happens to be this very showy Pride of Barbados. Love the flower structure. Love the colors. It's also a pollinator attractor. Hummingbirds butterflies, bees like this flower. Oh, here the hummingbirds went up in the tree. And I know I've talked about this before, but I'm just I was not familiar with this plant. This is called a porter weed. And it is the purple porter weed. And the unique thing about this plant is that it only flowers along its bloom stalk for only a segment. So you can see the bloom stalks can be quite long and it will only bloom for a certain segment. And then the next day it will bloom through another segment. And the pollinators absolutely love this plant. Look how unique it is. I have a phlox plant also planted with it, a John Fanuc phlox. But this porter weed is so unique. When you take a look at these bloom stalks and how long they can get, sometimes the segments I'll come out here and they'll just be a nice thick wide segment that's in bloom. This morning they're pretty small and thin segments. But I love how the pollinators are so attracted to this plant. And then I mentioned the Pride of Barbados that I'm excited about. I'm just going to quickly pan. I know I've, my very first video was on our south bed here. I'm just real happy with the annuals and the perennials in this garden that attract so many pollinators.
two plants to note. The coral honeysuckle has nice tube-shaped flowers. Nice long tube-shaped flowers that the hummingbirds really like. And that is native to East Texas. And our giant milkweed is not native. It is huge. And the reason we like it, I've mentioned in my very first video, is because it can, can sustain in the winter months a large number of monarch butterflies. Flowers on this thing are so unique big <laughs> and unique. Love this plant. The reason we ha why we have plants in pots is because when it rains it can get very soggy over here and we have very thick clay soil so plants typically do not care for that. And so our beds, we have raised beds to help with that. My butterfly bush isn't as happy here, the one over here. But the rest of the plants really do like this spot. Okay. Pan back over. In future videos, I'll be going over to my shade garden, and then the north garden, and then of course our hibiscus over here by our patio. Thanks for joining me today in my backyard. <laughs>